there, it's Pam again, and this week I thought I'd talk about other plants and flowers that you can eat besides vegetables and weeds. So um, a lot of these uh, little plants that are around, they're probably better as a garnish rather than as a meal. There's not a lot of science in there to say, yes, you can eat a heap of it, and there is some science to say that no, you can't. However... If you look up toxic um, properties of spinach and um, brassicas, you will find that there's caveats there as well. So do your research. Probably a mouthful of what I'm talking about is not going to do you any harm. Now, first up is my uh, primroses. They're a bit out of focus, aren't they? Um, they are edible leaves and petals some of the leaves are quite um, lettuce like but a bit tougher the flavor is lettuce but they're a bit tougher um, and the petals vary between from plant to plant and also I think time of day so this little pale yellow one that I've got I'm focusing on is the best of all, all the flavors that I've got here the others are all tending to be a little bit more bitter. So I've moved along to the lemon-scented geranium. I've never actually used it, but I have it on good authority from friends who line the base of um, their cake tins and cook cakes over the top of it. It apparently gives it a really nice uh, lemony sort of flavour. So I'm looking at garlic chive flour at the moment. It's got a very garlicky flavour and I have it on good authority that it will give you a very garlic breath as well. It is pretty, it looks lovely on the top of a salad. And this is my rock samphire plant. I bought the plant last year and it's sort of struggling in this position. I think it likes sandy soil and uh, it's pretty much in heavy clay. But um, it's kind of got a salty celery sort of flavour. So once again it's one of those things that I would use as a garnish. Just next to the rock samphire is a bright orange marigold. That's one of the calendulas. Um, they taste better than they smell. They've got a sort of a sweetish flavour that's kind of got that smell in it as well. Uh, they look very pretty on a salad, but I don't think I'd eat them in uh, vast quantities. I've upended a pot of canna lilies here, and um, this is the tuber there and the shoot there and that's a bigger shoot we have actually eaten these in the past they would be okay they're kind of like water chestnuts they haven't really got much flavor of their own but they're crunchy and they'll take up the flavor of other food um, they're the South American plant that came to the UK but I never gained the flavor uh, like uh, potatoes did but this shoot here would be a nice shoot to eat and here's the aloe vera. It's a pretty unhealthy specimen. It's in a really tough condition. Um, they say you can have the peel the leaves and have um, the pulp in smoothies. Um, and I have to say I've never tried it, but lots of people do it. I left my rocket to go to seed or to flower over winter. It's going to come out fairly soon. But rocket flower, of course, is going to be edible. Um, the actual, the rocket seed pods, uh, young seed pods are quite nice as well. Um, and if you're absolutely sick of waiting for your broad beans to come in to uh, produce some beans, the flowers and the little shoots, the, you know, the top leaves, are very tasty added to a salad. The same applies to your pea shoots and pea flowers. They're, my peas are finally getting peas on there, but they seem to have been in flower for weeks. These corn flowers are a nice, colourful addition to a salad. I just sprinkle a few around. They haven't got a lot of flavour, but they're quite pleasant. But over the back here, I've got some allison. And allison just tastes like broccoli. It's a really nice little thing to, once again, add to a salad, toss it on top. Down here waiting to be planted out are some dahlia tubers. 
Now, dahlias were actually introduced to um, the UK and Europe at the same time as potatoes, but they didn't take off. They've been bred for their flower. Um, and they're so pretty. Um, and also the tuber flavours are very variable. Um, we have tried them and thought they were pretty boring, but, you know, if you were starving, you'd certainly have a go at them. Down in the orchard area, there are some nasturtiums, which are commonly known to be edible. They've sort of got a peppery flavour, and um, you can eat the flowers, leaves, and make the buds or seed pods into capers. And down here is... Um, hollyhock leaves. These are part of the Malva family and um, there's a lot of edible varieties of Malva. Um, the leaves, flowers and young seed pods of hollyhock are edible. Um, yeah, they've got a mild flavour and we, when we ran out of um, the Malva parvifolia a few years ago when one of us had a bad cold, we used up um, some of the hollyhock leaves which are kind of like Malva parvifolia on steroids they're just bigger, thicker and um, similar in their mucilaginous um, sort of uh, texture and last but not least don't forget the vine leaves you end up with loads and loads of um, branches that you don't really need and you should actually be thinning some out so the vine leaves that you use for dolmatis or various salads are the ones that are still soft. Um, you pick them from about three leaves back from the tip and pick two or three from each branch and um, then you blanch them for a couple of minutes or for as long as you actually need to soften them and then you use them either as a salad or as, a dol as dolmatis. Uh, the salad recipes basically are the ingredients for your dolmatis, but um, you don't bother wrapping them up. And if you have a failure with your dolmatis, then you end up with um, vine leaf salad. And depending upon your recipe, it's going to be really tasty. And um, I think that's about it for the spring season food for free in your garden. So I'll sign off till next time.